Good afternoon, everybody, or good evening if you're in Europe, or good morning if you're in Australia. So um, today I'm going to go over uh, just some more Excel information that is useful in creating any Excel statements reports. So cell references, uh, how formulas work with those, and then using the fill handle, which if you guys have <laughs> seen one of my demos, you know how much I like using the fill handle. <clears throat> so previous Wednesdays, July 1, I covered too much. So I'll probably go over some of this other stuff on future Wednesdays. And then here's where I, <laughs> I uh, made a little more manageable uh, uh, topics in other, other Wednesdays since then and the recordings are on the Excel Statements YouTube channel. So you can just Google Excel Statements YouTube channel and that should take you to it. So cell references, um, I think this is, this is somewhere between beginner and intermediate, understanding the difference between absolute and relative references. And that's where you see the dollar signs um, in a cell address. And I, typically use the F4 key um, to set that because I'm not very good at typing. So instead of typing $A7, where I want absolute column A and relative row seven, um, I'll just like point to the cell. And of course, when you um, select a cell in a formula, uh, both the column and the row are relative. And so by uh, cycling through with the F4 key, I can get the dollar sign in front of the column uh, reference, the A. And, you know, you just keep hitting F4 and it's going to cycle through all, co all combinations. So no dollar signs, dollar signs in front of both the column and the row, uh, dollar sign in front of just the row or dollar sign just in front of the column. So you probably know that we encourage the use of named ranges, which are typically one cell ranges with Excel statements. And one reason for that is those are always absolute. So if you um, put in a the name of a named range, and of course you can use the insert key to do that, then um, it's always gonna be absolute. You don't have to worry about putting the two dollar signs in or hitting the F4 key or something like that. And that, you know, like I wrote here, that's one good reason to use named uh, named cells or named ranges. Obviously the other one, well, there are other two. One is that they can be self-documenting. If you go and look at a formula and it's got a reference to A3, um, you don't have to go up and look at A3 if instead of saying A3, it says uh, subaccount. <laughs> then you know, oh, that's pointing to my subaccount cell. <clears throat> and we, when you named, when you uh, leave the option to name the ranges on in, in the Excel statements insert from a cell screen, then the names that it gives us cells are the same as the parameter names in the Excel statements functions, which be, you, means you can use that control shift A trick to list out the parameter names. And since we made those cells the named the same as those parameters, it knows where to find those. So before you copy formulas, and I've seen beginners who go to copy formulas and it just doesn't work. And so they end up uh, re-entering a similar formula, you know, in, in the cell to the right or the cell below or something like that. And that's typically because they're not getting the absolute and relative cell references correct. They're not, they're not understanding that you need to make something, typically that you need to make something absolute. Because as I mentioned, the default, if you just point, if you're entering a formula and you just point to a cell, you select a cell, it, it's going to put that in as both relative column and, and relative row, which very often is not what you is not going to allow you to copy that. And, and I'll show you this obviously in the, in the demo. So, and the other thing is, you know, using the fill handle to copy, which is the way I typically um, copy formulas around. 
uh, at least to neighboring cells. And fill handle, again, you see me use that a lot. And you can just drag values or formulas to copy them. And then uh, the really neat trick when you're creating a report in Excel statements is if you double click on the fill handle, it will automatically copy um, that formula down until it sees nothing um, on an, in an adjacent column. So if you've got your um, account numbers and your account descriptions and you go to uh, put in a formula like, you know, equals PTD bow or equals YTD bow, you do that in the first row. And as long as that cell is adjacent, it can be to the right or to the left of one of those columns you have for your accounts, if you double click on the fill handle, it will automatically copy down until it sees the last account, which is of course exactly what you want. But a, a real um, caveat there or something to to warn you about is get all of your PTDs uh, made, get all of your columns set with the correct formulas before you go down and start inserting rows for subtotals and totals. Because otherwise, and I've done you know, <laughs> hundreds of reports. And when I have to go back and, you know, the client says, oh, I want another column on here uh, for the same period last year. And they hadn't told me that, um, but I've already got all the subtotals and totals in there. That makes it much harder because you can't just double click because it will stop when it sees a blank row, uh, you know, adjacent to it. So if you've got blank rows, you know, under your totals for assets, you've got a blank row and then you start your liabilities. Uh, when you double click to copy down, it's gonna stop at that blank row. So I end up, you know, having to to typically do, I do a, a control C to copy the formula. And then I go in and select all those ranges down below, which is typically a discontinu discontinuous selection. And then I do control V to copy down into all of those blocks that I've selected. Um, so another thing that you can do with the fill handle is you can clear uh, the contents of a cell or a range, and I'll show you that as well. And then um, some of you may have seen me also use it to autofill series, and there's there's some interesting capabilities built in for um, autofilling uh, ranges as well using the fill handle. And then there's something called lists, um, which I don't really consider autofill, um, although I, I guess if you look at online, I was I was just doing some quick looking around, poking around, Googling around, uh, looking for maybe some more ideas or, or things I wasn't aware of, and uh, several sites that I found said that lists are part of autofill, and they are and they aren't, um, and I'll show you lists as well, and there's a really neat thing you can do with um, Excel statements that that some people may may actually use. So lists work with a fill handle. There are some built-in lists. So days of the weeks and months are there, and that may be something that you would want to use. And it has both long and short versions of days of the weeks and months. And then um, what I was talking about that you might you probably don't know, you can create your own lists as well. And so this is where you go to create the list. And obviously I'm gonna demo that for you. And I'll show you how you might actually use a custom list with Excel statements. So version three is still scheduled for later this month. Um, and next week's Wednesday session, I'll show you some of the new features in version three. I have a feeling that's gonna fill up a lot of Wednesdays uh, starting next week is probably most of these will be on new features and functionality with version three. And we also reluctantly made the decision that we're not, with version 3.0, which is gonna be released this month, uh, we're not gonna have the project option available for 3.0, uh, but instead we're gonna have 3.1 coming out later, which will be 3.0 essentially, maybe with some fixes in it, <laughs> um, assuming we're not perfect, um, but that will then support the optional uh, project reporting as well. So future sessions, and again, if you have any ideas, 
uh, let me know, you know, unmute yourself and give me some ideas now or email me uh, with things you'd like to see. And as I said, uh, probably for the several Wednesdays starting uh, next week, we're going to be seeing uh, new features and functionality with version three. Okay, so I actually, just so I don't put you through what I typically do, which is start Excel and then quickly go and do this. Um, and I like to do that because I just want to stress how easy it is, particularly if you know some of the shortcuts, um, how easy it is to uh, create a report. So again, because we've named those, and, and I named these two manually, the, the fiscal year and the period, um, we've named those the same as the <clears throat> parameter names. Uh, you know, it's all self-documenting, it's color coding, um, and these are gonna be absolute because they're, because they're names as well. And then the only other one here is the account. And you notice I've got the dollar sign in front of the A, but not in front of the seven. And so what that will do is let me copy this to the right, and it's still going to find the account. So even though I've moved over one column, um, by using a dollar sign, that, that A is always going to be A. And if I, if I had left that by the default, like this, and then copied this, then it's, it says, I can't find an account number of cash dash US dollars. And so it's basically saying, yeah, nothing there. So if I, if I do a demo, you, you notice I always go and lock that in because that's always gonna be in that particular column. It may not be column A, but I'm always gonna lock that column in in case I do need to copy the formula. You know, an example would be, okay, I've got peer to date, but I also wanna get year to date. So I can just go change change um, that, and then yeah, okay. Now I've got here to say in the first column. Um, I can copy that down by double clicking here, and then I'll copy this down by double clicking here. And I could have selected, you know, if if you're working on your columns, and this is analogous to your column layout in FRX or MR, um, you just go and you put in the first row what you want to see, you know, okay, here's where my budget is, here's the same period last year, and so forth. You just do that in the first row, and then you go select that, the formulas, all the formulas in that row, and double click on the fill handle here, and it's gonna copy them all down at once. But as I said, if if you've gone in and, and put some sub subtotals in, uh, so insert some rows here, and up, Go and sum these, okay, and I'll just copy that over here. Okay, and then I say, oh, I want this to be the year-to-date balance of the prior period. So I'm gonna do period minus one, and then I'll copy that down. Double click, here. Um, it stopped here. So you can see when it's selected, it stopped there. So that says period minus one, but below here, it still says period. So that's why you don't wanna do this <laughs> too early in the process of creating your report. And like I said, if if you have to come back um, because someone said, oh, and we need another column there, then I'll just copy the formula. I, so I highlighted or I selected the formula and then I hit control C and that creates that little I don't know, in Apple we used to call that a marquee around it. And then what I do is I come down here and I say, yeah, I need to, you know, to get these, okay? And then I'm gonna hold the control key down and I say, oh yeah, I also need to get these. And I also need to get these. And then I do a control V, okay? And so now I've got that period minus one where he copied it to um, in one swell foop. And obviously, you know, I was pretending we had more subtotals um, down there, which is why I was, you know, <laughs> this is all, this is actually all one 
contiguous range, but I was pretending when I was skipping those that, oh, that's a, you know, we have the subtotal for uh, liabilities, we have subtotal for uh, uh, income, expenses, whatever, you know, or maybe this could have been just current assets here and then we're continue down on, uh, you know, an, another category. <clears throat> so, so absolute versus relative, and another good example of that, and here I'm going to use the fill handle. I, I want to see uh, six months out here. So I want to see periods one through six. And so if if I have a one there and I grab my fill handle, and so I want one through six, oh, no, it's just copying it. Because remember, that's what it does is it copies it. Um, and I dragged over itself to erase that. But on the other hand, um, it it does have some interesting intelligence. So if I do, if I start out with some text and then have a number, and then I drag over, see what it's doing. So it's smart enough to do that, which is which is pretty interesting. Um, and again, I'll show you. I can drag back over the range and erase it that way. And it's even smarter than that in some cases. So if I do Q1 and then copy that, I mean, you see, okay, Q1, Q2, Q3, but watch what it does when you get to Q4. It actually understands what you mean by Q. So it starts over again at Q1 thinking, oh, you must be talking about quarters and there can only be four quarters. So that's kind of interesting as well. Uh, I think kind of unexpected, um, even when you know that, you know, when you have text, uh, and followed by a number that it will extend that out. So to get a list um, incrementing, you can you can start the list, and from this it will know enough. It says, "Oh, you're starting at one and you're going to two. You're probably counting up by ones." And so you you notice it just continues that it it knows it's figured out what I was trying to do, and I could. Uh, I could also do something like this. So one, three, select those, oops, select those two, and then pull it over. And you notice it's counting by twos. Okay, so um, you, you, if you've watched some of my demos, you may know that, um, I don't do one, two, and pull it over. I hit the control key. And when you have the control key and you pull over, then you're telling it, oh, we want uh, to increment by one. And, and you can also do that. After you do this, you notice this little autofill options. And so I can go in here and say, oh yeah, I didn't want to copy them. I wanted to fill a series. So you can do it after the fact. And holding the control key down is, is essentially telling it, oh, we want to fill um, a series like that. Any questions on this? Okay, so again, uh, absolute versus relative references. So if I do PTD bow, and again, I type enough that that's the only choice down here, and then I can hit tab, and that gets me to the first paren, which is where I want to be when I use Control Shift A. So if you've got the formula name and the opening parentheses, and you do Control Shift A, then it's going to list out your parameter names. And again, we tried to make this easy by um, having the parameter names or, or naming these uh, cells the same as the parameter names. So I'm going to do here. And again, I'm going to do F4, F4 until I see dollar A7. And then for period, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to do F4, F4 because what I want to see is no absolute column, but absolute row. So it's always going to get the period from that first uh, row, always from row six. And it's always getting my account from column A, okay? And then again, I can double click here 
And of course, in the demo data, there is nothing in the first uh, nine periods. So maybe I, you know, I, I should have maybe started on 11 here. <laughs> um, or I'll start on 10. And then control. Okay, so now we've got some numbers in there. And if you select columns, then when you resize, it's going to resize all the columns in your selection as well. Um, so any questions on any of this? Okay. And I want to delete these. I'm going to grab the fill handle, drag over the range, and I delete it without using any keystrokes, uh, you know, without right-clicking or any of that. I just use the fill handle for deleting as well. <clears throat> so uh, a list. So I'm going to show you, well, I'll show you how that works. So I can type mun and then use my fill handle. And of course, you can use your fill handle going down as well. And you notice what it does when I get past the seventh one. Again, it knows those are the days of the week and they're only seven. So when you get to the last one, it starts up again for you. Okay. And so that's one of the built in lists. Um, I could also do it with Monday. Or, you know, you can start on any day you want. Okay, and then um, select that, grab the fill handle. And so it's the complete uh, day name instead. And we can do the same thing with months. So I can say, oh, July. And then I can take that over. And again, it's going to restart over again. Um, after December. And similarly, as I showed you with the days, you can use whole month names as well. <laughs> if you if you type it correctly, you can use whole month names. It doesn't know what Jolge is. Um, and then I'll stretch this one over and you'll see it's the complete uh, month names in there. And so those lists, those are the built-in lists. So I'm going to go to options Right, and then advanced, and then I'm going to go all the way down here. Uh, what's the section? General, and then this edit custom lists. And so these are the built-in lists, and you can't you can't delete these, okay? But you can make a new list. And I'm going to show you something. Um, we actually used to have capability like this in version one, and nobody was using it. And there was also an issue if you had multiple databases. Um, so we removed it from Excel statements. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab my entire chart because I dropped my chart in here. So I'm, I'm going to do uh, uh, shift and down. And so I selected that whole range. I'm going to do, well, I didn't need to do control C. Um, I just need to select it. And then I'm going to go in file, options, uh, advanced. and edit custom lists and you notice it knows that i've got a selection and i'm going to say i'm going to import that selection in as a custom list so there are all my list entries okay um, and so now what i can do with my fill handle i can say oh i want to start at uh i want all these kinds of expenses starting with 80 10. And again, I use a single quote to tell it, don't think this is a number, but always know that it's instead a uh, text. Okay, so I've got that in there. And now if I use my fill handle, it's going in and using that custom list. It's finding that custom list and putting the accounts in. So it's not just, you know, incrementing by 10, uh, because you know, you know, we've got some accounts in here. So these are these are the valid accounts that I grabbed from here and dropped in as a custom list. So if you're doing a lot of different reports, uh, you know, balance sheets, income statements, or whatever, 
rather than dropping the whole chart in and then deleting the account types that you don't want on that report, you can you can do this list and you know as long as you um, put a valid account number in, you can then use your fill handle um, to uh, grab or or insert as many uh, sequential account numbers as you want to, and you know you can go, you can go backwards as well. So you know, <laughs> so it goes from eighty ten to seventy five hundred to seventy four twenty, right? Any questions on this as well? Okay. Any questions on anything in Excel statements? And I want people to bring questions to these. <laughs> yeah, I, do I, I have a question. Oh, good. Okay. Um, about the budgeting process. Okay. Um, I'm still trying to understand it. I finally have my worksheets all set up. Uh, with the inserted columns, mm -hmm. um, but when I go to um, email it to someone, it, sometimes it comes up with, it changes all the cells and says um, pound sign, name, question mark. Yeah, that's because they don't have Excel statements. All right, they'll so. Have, they'll have to have Excel statements, um, the add-in loaded in order for those formulas uh, to appear. So everyone that does budgeting would have to have be a user. Yes. Oh, uh, because we only have one user. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> well, the the idea there that's normally the case where they all would have licenses, because if you're doing budgeting and you know you're you're talking about managers who have budgetary responsibility that you want to send this out to, right? Right. For for them to come for their budget. So yes, that means that <laughs> I, I think that means that you're going to be sending out reports to them or making reports available to them that show, you know, their actual versus budget and variance and so forth. And if they have uh, Excel statements licenses, then you no longer have to uh, schedule, generate, um, and distribute those reports. Uh, what you do instead is you save that report, save it as a read-only Excel um, workbook. You save that on the network, and you tell all those managers where that uh, file is, where that uh, workbook is, and you set up compartmental security in Excel statements. <clears throat> so that you have their login names here, and then over here, you would filter for only their own sub accounts. And of course you can filter by accounts and companies and ledgers as well. But anyway, you, you do this and then you save that report read only. All those managers are using the same report. So they, they open exactly that same workbook. And again, you know, I suggest making it read only. And they're, they're only gonna see their own numbers. They're only gonna see what you have filtered for them and then they can also drill down and see the detail uh, behind, you know, their actuals on that report. Huh. So again, for companies where you have managers with budgetary responsibility, you know, obviously the reason is so they can get those reports and see how they're doing against their budget. You know, and you probably have a variance column in there as well. And if you do that um, by using compartmental security, where each of those managers also has a license, you know, it's it's self-service. You no longer have to generate those and send them out. And you're also not going to get the phone call saying, hey, why did my uh, travel expense go up by $3,000? You know, wh what is that? Because they can drill down um, so they can see, oh, yeah, that was, you know, American Airlines for when Judy went to that conference. You know, let's pretend it was back before the pandemic, right? Uh, where you would actually fly somewhere. Um, so, of course, I had an assistant controller at a big not-for-profit tell me, yeah, yeah, I'm not getting those calls anymore, uh, but I'm getting calls now where they're saying, hey, Judy's not in my department. You coded this to the wrong sub-account. And I told her, I said, well, wouldn't you rather get that call sooner rather than later, you know, rather than, you know, two months later, figure it out or, 
maybe after you sent the the paper report that they couldn't drill down on. So, so yeah, the, the idea is if you're going to have people doing their own budgets and you create sheets for them, then they do have to have Excel statements licenses. So you all right, but they but they don't they don't need SL licenses. No, correct. No, don't need SL. No, nope. exactly right. Need XL licenses, and right. that, so they would just. <laughs> Because they, then they would just go into Excel and pull up the report. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All the right. other neat thing, you know, when you do that is, you know, they're going in and they're looking at their expenses versus budget report. Um, if they want to see, oh, you know, what was this uh, three months ago? You know, they don't have to go and look through their files or call you and say, hey, could you give me the one from August? Uh, I want to look at that. They can. They could just go in here and change the period and, and again, see all their numbers and then have drill down into those as well. And again, the idea is when you save that um, report is, oops, see, I, I did it wrong. Save as uh, more options. And then you go to tools. This used to be much easier, but with later versions of Excel, they're making this stuff much harder. Um, general options, and then uh, read only. And you can make read only recommended. It's gonna give them a message saying, you know, we, we want you to open this read only, but they can override that. But if you put a password on modify, then they won't have that choice. Uh, it, it's never, they're never going to be able to um, alter it because you don't want them altering it, you know, <laughs> going and stopping on one of your uh, PTD bow formulas or something like that. Uh, so they can make a copy if they want and then, you know, play with that all they want. But since you're making this to be shared among all of those managers, you want to make that one read only. Um, okay. And so you, you do this on the modify. And yes, you have to buy more licenses. They're $149 a user, which it's funny that consultants tell me it's priced too cheaply, but I've never heard that from a user. Um, <laughs> the, um, the other license that you may need, because this is um, obviously accessing your SQL server, your database server, uh, each user needs to be licensed to use that SQL server as well. And so you may have to work with your IT people on making sure that you're, uh, you have valid licenses for those users. And those are named licenses. They're not like Dynamics SL licenses. They're like Excel statements licenses where you need one for each named user. You can't share them. Um, you know, concurrent licensing is how Dynamics SL works. But Excel statements and SQL work off of, uh, you know, a particular person has a license or not. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's why, you know, we we didn't even think of um, <laughs> of having those sheets, those budget entry sheets being opened without Excel statements uh, license, because you know, like I say, I mean, if they've if they've got enough responsibility to put their own budget in, then um, you're certainly um, going to want to be sending them reports against that budget and the the nice thing about excel statements reports when they have a license is that they can go change the period they can drill down they can do all of that and they will love that and then the nice thing for you is like i said you no longer have to generate uh, a schedule generate and uh distribute those reports it's all self-service at that point okay thank you okay any other questions Okay, so I'm hoping we get more people so I get more questions, because I, I I really want this to be as much Q&A as it is tips and tricks. So, okay, see you next week. And again, next week, uh, it'll be some of the new features and functionality with version three, just to whet your appetites. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Yep.